welcome to Right on the Money. I'm Rebecca Power. So happy to be with you this week. And of course, the professor, Tom Mosley. How are you doing this week, Tom? I'm doing great. How about yourself? Doing great. A lot of people still watching the news, wondering, worrying about the market. Even bonds are not doing well. I know that you and your clients don't really have to worry about that because you have it. A, a, you have kind of a blueprint for each and every client. Let's start with some questions. Jared says, "I am 40 years old. What do I need to do to get ready for retirement? Is it too late?" No. Uh, and if you're starting at 40, you're probably fast starting sooner rather than most people. Good. Rebecca, because a lot of people. Wait and wait and wait. In fact, I, one of the big box firms, and they're, they're really good at the Monte Carlo model, and they're really good at, at a lot of things, and, and they're good at surveys. And they did a survey recently, and they found that 58% of the people who were 55 years of age in America had less than $25,000 put away for retirement. Oh, my goodness. So if you're starting at 40, that's great. Good. But if you're watching this show, if you're starting at 30, that's even better. And if you're one of those really weird people that really prepares for things and you're starting in your 20s, that's, that's even better, even better. Because the sooner that you start in saving from, for retirement, the more it's actually going to help you itself. Mark Twain uh, had a lot of things that he said, but he said the biggest thing people don't understand is the miracle of compound interest. Yeah. And that is that if you're putting money away, in fact, I saw a chart one time that if a person started when they were 20 years of age uh -huh. and they saved for just eight years and then somebody else started at the ninth year and that other person saved all the way until they were 65, because of the miracle of compound interest at any interest rate, the person who saved for eight years earlier had more money set aside for retirement than the one who had saved from, say, 29 years all the way until 65 because of the miracle of compound interest. So starting early is a key. Now, we talk a, we talk a lot to our people about, you know, you need to take your lumber yard and turn it into a house that you can live in in retirement. And when you mentioned that a lot of our clients, I mean, we've, we've got a great deal of contentment right now, not happiness. Because happiness is, is dependent on what's happening and what's happening in the news and in the market and, and with inflation, and with interest rates and the world geopolitical. I mean, there's a lot of clouds out there that are raining. It's not a hurricane, but it's close to it. Yeah. And, and, but the people that we work with have a contentment because we've built a plan that prepares for a rainy day. I mean, if you, if you didn't prepare for a rainy day, you wouldn't worry about sealing your roof. That's and right. you never think about, oh, I'm so glad my roof is sealed, but when it's not raining. But when it starts raining and it starts coming down, you say, I'm glad we got that tarp paper on our roof. I'm glad we've got that sealed so it won't come through the roof and, 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 and make us uh, wet down right. here. So the key thing is in a lumber yard, you say, what's in a lumber yard? Well, we refer to a lumber yard as things like your four plants. Not your floor plans, but your four, <laughs> four plans. plans. Right, a 401k. <laughs> a 403B, a 457. A 401k is a, usually a public company that has a retirement plan that they offer. A 403B is a private or nonprofit company that offers almost identical to a 401k. They just call it a 403B. A 457 is a plan where you can put away money in a deferred comp situation if you work for a governmental in indice. Um, you can also have IRAs. You say, I don't have any of those available to me. Well, you can have a regular IRA. It stands for individual, as opposed to the company plan, an individual retirement account. You can have a Roth IRA, which is really, really good because all of the rest of the ones that we've mentioned, by the way, there are some that offer a Roth 401k. And with the Secure Act 2.0 probably going to become law in the next few months, they're going to add a lot more Roth 401ks. And here's what happens. We've explained it before on this program. You pay the tax before it goes in. It grows without tax. And then it comes out without tax and without strings. So all of those things are there. Now, if you're a private business owner, your lumber yard, you know, lumber yard, you got two by fours, you got two by sixes, you got doors and windows and trusses. If you're a private business owner 
you may be able to have something like a solo 401k, where if you're the only person that works in your corporation, you're a solo corporation, you don't have any employees, you say, why would you want to have something like that? Well, the fees are the same, which is good, but instead of saving like in an IRA up to a maximum, depending on your age of, of uh, 6,000 or 7,000, in those solo 401ks, we just set one up for a, a doctor just recently, and that person can save up to 56, 57, 58, $8,000, put it aside tax-free if that's what she wants to do. So there are all kinds of vehicles that are available to you. What you need to do, you say, well, why do I need advice at this point? Can I just start a brokerage account? Well, you need somebody to look at your particular situation and say, what options are available to you because for instance this doctor who came to me and and she works for a very large hospital and she came to me and she said you know yeah I want to start an IRA because I don't have these opportunities and these options available through the hospital and I just brought up I said have you ever considered a solo 401k do you have a corporation yes do you, are, do you have any employees no well she qualifies for it in general and now even though when she's just starting out and you may be 40 or 35 or 30 and, and just starting out, and you might say, I can't put 56, 57, $58,000 into a plan every year, but you need to build the vehicle that will hold that much so that when you do turn things around, things start going, then you're able to, to put more than just the 7,000 into it. So all of those plans are, are very, very good for you at that time. Now your plan, the blueprint, which is complimentary and, and really amazing, and the reason for a retirement blueprint is because, like you were talking about the lumber yard, you can't build a house without all of these different pieces. So it's not just one 401k or one Roth, it's many different pieces that can make your retirement puzzle. Let's talk about that blueprint. Well, the, the blueprint, has to do when you when you transform that lumber yard in into the house and and nobody's ever seen a house made in entirely out of two by fours <laughs> right. and and you've never seen a house made entirely out of doors and I I used to say you've never seen one made entirely out of windows but Robert, a lot in California are. Robert <laughs> Schuller built the Crystal Cathedral. It was made all out of glass. So I backed off on that one a little bit. So you take that lumber yard that's made up yeah. of all of these 401ks, 403bs. And it's, I've actually had people come to me. One guy came. He was a champion. He came to me with six 401ks that he had amassed during his working career. From different companies. From different companies. And he'd never rolled them into an IRA that would give him more flexibility. He'd never rolled them into the next 401k with the company that he was working for. So he had never made any real financial planning. So he had all of these different 401ks. And what we did was we rolled all of them into an individual retirement account that gave him more options for investment. So there's all kinds of things you can do. Now here's some, here's some important things about continuing to talk about building your lumber yard. Some people come and they say, just listen to this and, and, and calm down, okay? They, they say, <laughs> I get a 4% match at my company with my 401k. Should I take advantage of that? Well, wait a minute. You're going to get 4% free money. And I emphasize that four-letter word, free money. So I always encourage you that if your company matches your contribution, if I put in $5 and they match Five five dollars, then they're going to match five dollars, and I put in five, and I have ten. Is that a good deal? Yes. It's always a good deal to take advantage of the match. Then after the match, you say, "Well, I've heard maybe building my own IRA or building my own different kind of plan might be more advantageous." Absolutely, it could be. But I will tell you, take advantage of the match. But for goodness sakes, get involved in your four hundred one k. Here's another key. It's one thing to get the money into your checking account, pay the cash, pay the tax on it, and then have to write a check to go back into the IRA and wait till the end of year and then tax season of next year and get a deduction for it. I'll promise you it's simpler, it's automatic for you to get involved in your 401k at least to your match while you're building your lumber yard. And that way it's automatic. You never see it. You say, well, I really can't afford to do it. Let me give you a, a formula. When you get a raise, 
that's one of those things where you start making more money than you're making now. <laughs> Hopefully you'll get one. Hopefully with inflation the way it is, you might get one coming this year. When you get a raise, if you get 8%, put 2% of that raise over into your 401k and continue to raise and build up your lumber yard. Now, we coach tons of people on converting a lumber yard into a house you can live in in retirement. But before we can coach that, we have to also help a lot of people build their lumber yard. Here's what we offer you. Call in, meet with one of our advisors, one of the guys on our team, or one of the people on our team. Come in and we will sit down with you and we'll look at the options that you have available and make sure we give you all the positives and negatives about every single option you have available for you. And then we can help you get started if you're 25, 30, 35, or 40 building your lumber yard. The number, 866-709-1462. Let me give it to you again, 866-709-1462. We can help build your lumber yard. Absolutely. It's just a warm conversation. Absolutely no obligation and no cost. A wonderful offer. We are setting aside just 10 appointment reservations this week for this broadcast. So please make sure you call that number now so you can meet Tom and his amazing team soon. Stay with us. More wonderful advice right after this. How confident are you in your current financial plan? Do you know with certainty how the recent market volatility will affect your future hopes and dreams? How much are you paying in taxes? And how much are you losing to unnecessary high fees? You didn't work to save this money so that you could spend your time worried in retirement. Now is the time to take charge of your finances so you can feel confident about your future. Call in during the next 30 minutes of today's show only to set up an absolutely complimentary, no obligation, full-blown financial review that will result in your own customized written plan that we're giving away complimentary to the first 10 people who respond. We'll start with a full-blown analysis of what you already have. By running a report to untangle how much you are currently paying in fees, how you're allocated for risk, and what it's costing to work with your current advisor. Next, we'll identify your goals. Where do you see yourself in the next five years? Where do you want to go, and who do you hope to go there with? Is your current financial plan set up to get you there without mishap? Let's design a roadmap to create a financial plan you can follow with confidence. Get the piece that so many people are missing from their retirement. Find out how having a written plan can make a difference to your retirement dreams. Call now to schedule your complimentary, no obligation, full-blown financial review today. Welcome back to Right on the Money, brought to you by Mosley Wealth Management. And I'm so honored each week to have the CEO and founder of Mosley Wealth Management, Tom Mosley. And a lot of people don't know this, but you, uh, we call you the professor because you have taught all across California. You give all these wonderful complimentary seminars. I know you're about education and empowerment. So we do urge you to email in any questions you have. We started the show with Jared, who said, I'm 40. What do I need to do to get ready for retirement? We've already given some great advice. But how does he protect himself? Because you've always taught us it's about preserving preserving what you have and protecting yourself. So let's go there. Well, when you're 40 years old, let's imagine different scenarios. Everybody out there, you've got a different scenario than anybody else. Some of you are single. Some of you are single living in an apartment. Some of you are single and you're buying a house and you, you don't want to leave anybody that inherits all the stuff. If something were to happen to you, you don't want to leave them in a lurch to pay off everything that you've decided to buy. Some of you are married and you're in the same situation. You, you've got a spouse that you want to protect because in California, let's face it, it takes two incomes to run a house whole a lot of times even if you're single but especially if you have children there's all kinds of things that that you need to cover in case you're not here yeah. so you need to protect yourself as you're growing Jared from 40 or those of you who are 30 years old and have some of those responsibilities you need to protect yourself from now until the time you do retire at least until until you get your lumber yard bill you need to protect your loved ones with life insurance. Now, I'm not, I'm not talking about the expensive life insurance. You don't need that necessarily. Now, if, you, if you're really a, a good 
or a wage earner right now, or you really are bringing in a lot of money right now, then you may need to look at some of the more permanent life insurances, and you might have the forethought and the vision to look down the road and say, hey, when I pass away, this is how much life insurance I want. But if not, if you, you want to cover yourself for the, the amount you need for as long as you need it. And, and, and that's why it's important that you sit down with somebody who's able to help you walk through with this. And you say, well, how much do I need? Well, do you have a mortgage? Well, yeah, we have a mortgage. And how much is it? $600,000. Do you have children? Yes, I have children. How old are they? Three and five. So let's see, if they go through school the normal way and they go to a four or five years of college and then they get their degree, your kids are really out of the house in 23 more years, or 20 more years to the, from the three-year-old. So in a, person, in a person like that, you might calculate, hey, how much do we need to pay off the mortgage? What are our other debts? How much will it take to educate my children? Hey, you know, you, you're going to take a guess because of the rising cost yeah. of education. And then how much would I like to leave my spouse? Because when if you pass away unexpectedly early, which life insurance is just insuring yourself and protecting your loved ones in case you go early, you might need to, to, to see what a 20-year term policy for a certain amount. Now, most companies will give you 15 to 20 times your earned income. So if you're making $100,000 a year, you're probably going to be able to pick up $1.5 to $2 million. You say, wow, that's a lot. How about your mortgage? There goes $600. Mm -hmm. How about your college education? There goes $300 for the two children. And all of those things, because there's going to be enough emotional stress left on the family yeah. when somebody goes through the loss of one of the parents. There's going to be enough emotional stress that you don't want to add financial burden on as well. I have seen, because I was in the ministry for 22 years yeah. before I got into financial services, Rebecca, I have seen single spouses, male or female, all right? I'm not talking about just females. I have seen single spouses who lost their mate, and it seemed like they were in a rush to get married, not because necessarily it was the right person or that, you know, they, they were in love. They were in it love. was finances. It was a financial, <laughs> and, I, and I lovingly say it, the, I don't mean to offend yeah. anybody, they were marrying a wallet. Right. They were marrying somebody that would come in and, and, and if Give you're doing stability. that, you, you don't even know you're doing that because you're, you're in survival mode if the finances are not there. So, so life insurance is one of the ways to protect yourself, of course you need to have health insurance. And uh, how could anybody not have health insurance? And you gotta be careful with health insurance. If you're working for a company, I've found out recently, and your spouse is working for another company, if they choose to go on your plan, they may charge you more money because they're on your plan rather than taking advantage of their own plan. We just hired a lady and she said, no, if I came off my husband's insurance and took advantage of the complimentary insurance we give our employees, yeah. she said they would charge my husband another $600. So you gotta be careful when you switch from one spouse's yeah. plan to the other. There are all kind of things there. But so you gotta protect yourself during this time to make sure that if something happened to you and you weren't here, I, I, I pray that it never happens to you, but it does happen to some, and that's why you buy insurance. Most of you have insurance on your house that if it burned down, it would be replaced, and most of your houses have never burned down. Right. And they never will burn down, but you still pay the insurance. And you need to have life insurance to protect your loved ones in the very same way. Hey, you want to look at it? We search over 100 and I think it's 106 now, different companies that are all strongly related. And depending on your health issues that you might have run into, we will find you the very best policy. There's a lot of people say, we can give you a quote that's the lowest quote, but we want to give you a quote that you're going to get, you know? And if you're going to come in and you're going to have, well, I've got diabetes, we can still get you covered, but yeah. we just know what companies to go to to do that. Give us a call, 866-709-1462, and we can show you how this is just one piece of the puzzle in a, in a blueprint to get you ready for retirement, Jerry. 
Jared, so we can prepare you to build that lumber yard, protect that lumber yard, so when you do reach retirement, you're able to have a successful time. That's right, and there's no obligation at all, so call that number to get your reservation. And that we, when we come back, we're gonna talk about other types of life insurance that can actually earn you income each month in retirement. It's not just death insurance, it can actually earn you income. Stay with us, more with Tom Mosley, right after this. As a good saver, you've been putting away money during your working years. Studies find that the biggest fear of retirees is running out of money. Market volatility isn't just the downward movement of stock prices, it's the size and frequency of change. The more dramatic the ups and downs, the higher the volatility. This can put savers who are newly retired or a few years away from being retired at greater risk. Today's generation of retirees is not receiving traditional pensions as our parents or grandparents did. Instead, we have retirement accounts such as 401ks or 403bs. These accounts typically expose your money to market risk. The last thing you want right before retirement is to lose a portion of the money you need for income. But how do you turn these accounts into a retirement income? Is it safe to keep all your retirement money sitting in the stock market? The last thing you want is to lose a portion of the money you need for income due to market loss. By working with a financial professional, you can learn how to turn a portion of your savings into an income stream for life and income for the life of your spouse if you're married. We all have moments in our lives when we wish we had taken action sooner. Don't let procrastination rain on your retirement parade. Act now before it's too late. Please call our office to set up your no-cost, no-obligation retirement income review today. Welcome back to Right on the Money with Tom Mosley and I'm Rebecca Powers. Do you have a plan for retirement? Do you have a blueprint if you were to build a home? And I love that analogy. We say, build your lumber yard, get all the parts that you need for your retirement. We talked about life insurance, needing that to make sure your family and all your bills are paid if you should, you know, die young. There are life insurance policies and being an independent, you can search the whole globe for the very best. What are the ones, the types of life insurance that can actually give you income in your retirement? Right, you know, most people go out and buy term insurance. I've heard the numbers at 32, or excuse me, 82% of the life insurance that's sold is what's called term insurance. It covers you for a certain term. But life insurance is priced basically on two different things, your age and your health. Okay. In other words, you, can, you, you have a rate that's based on your birth date. Very few people can go back and change that, okay? A lot of us would like to try, but we can very few change our birthday. The other thing is our health, and, and if, if you've run into health issues, then, then companies can give you all the way from a preferred best super never breathe, breathe the wrong breath of air, you know, all the way down to you know, normal standard, yeah. all the way down to rated or substandard. So if, if you've got poor health, it may be that you can't get life insurance. I, I had a couple came in, this was about two years ago now, and they said, we wanna buy a million dollars worth of life insurance on, on each of us. And I said, that's great, uh, let me ask you some questions. They said, well, we just, wanna, we just wanna get the policy. And I said, well, wait a minute, How, how's your health? Because they were both like pushing 70. So they were, I mean, their age would have caused it to be high and their health needed to be really good if they needed the one million dollars. And, and the guy said, well, hers is terrible because <laughs> she's got diabetes and we can't get her A1C under nine something. But he said, I haven't had any problems since I had that stroke six weeks ago. <laughs> so, you know, I sat back and I said, you guys aren't gonna qualify well. <laughs> for life insurance. Now, Jared, I'm still talking to you, okay? Yeah. I hope you're watching. I thanks, thanks for sending in the question. You're 40, you probably haven't had a lot of strokes or a lot of diabetes. You might have not run <laughs> into those things. So if you do, see the vision for a permanent life insurance. Now I'll tell you who the best people are with this. People who are accountants, people who are CPAs, people who understand taxes, yeah. and they understand the, the cash value the tax advantages of cash value life insurance. Now those are called indexed universal life is what most people use anymore. Whole life insurance is still available, but it is pretty expensive. It allows the insurance companies to build really tall, nice buildings downtown <laughs> in all of the cities across the world. But it saves on taxes. But it but it saves on taxes, but indexed universal life is what I call a tweener. Okay. It's between somewhat term insurance 
and just outright whole life insurance where you're really putting together a policy, Jared, that number one, it'll cover you maybe for all of the things that we mentioned in the earlier segment. It'll cover your family in case something happens to you, but it will also build cash value. Now, indexed universal life works this way. Don't think it sounds too good to be true, or go ahead, but it's, this is the way it works. When the market, you put your money into the policy, and there's policy fees and everything. Get over it. I mean, that's just the cost. The <laughs> insurance companies have to make money. You want them to stay in business, by the way. But your money that's in your cash value never goes down when the market goes down, but it's tied to an index. I have just exactly the same policy I'm talking about right now, and it's tied to the S&P 500. In the last two years, I've made 9.5% positive on the money that's in my indexed universal life. And, and when the market goes down, you don't lose. And when the market goes down, I'm, I'm positive when my policy renews, actually it's coming up next month, when my policy, the anniversary date comes, I don't think with this year, as bad as it's been, I'll make anything. So what? I made 19% in the first two years, and it went up nine and a half, it locked in, it goes up nine and a half, it locks in, the market goes down, it stays there. So that might, that's just, that is just one of the tools yeah. in a toolbox. I, I've, I've said before, you know, I try to fix my own plumbing in my house. <laughs> Not a good idea. No, I got Don't a screwdriver and a pair of pliers <laughs> and a hammer. And then finally I call the plumber like my wife wanted me to do to start with. And that plumber comes in with a, a I don't offer to carry it upstairs if it's an upstairs <laughs> sink because he's got this huge, and he's got tools in there I've never seen before. I mean, he's got tools that he can tell them what to, no, not really, but he's got, he's got all the tools in the box. And a lot of people try to do it on their own with a hammer or a pair of pliers yeah. or with a screwdriver. Big mistake. And there's all kind of tools. And the one, is I just, the one I just told you about is just one of the tools that might be there for you, Jared, as we would help you build that lumber yard. Here's what you need to do. You got to call us. You got to dial 866-709-1462. Jared, you're 40. You should be able to know how to snap that CR code <laughs> that's in the corner and uh, QR code, CR yeah, code. Yeah, you were close. I'm, I'm, I mean, you know, it's the code. It's the little funny box where the guy was coloring with black and white in the corner. Snap that and it'll allow you to go onto our site Set up a time to come in and talk to one of our advisors and we'll help you in every way we can, but we will do it from your perspective as to what you need, what you need to cover and protect, and what you need in your lumber yard. Absolutely, and there are also some complimentary education seminars. We call him the professor for a reason. You can find those dates on our website as well. We'll see you next week. Thanks so much for joining us.